Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we are gonna break down all of the IT projects that I was involved in in the year 2025. And I will also show you the goals, scope, deliverables, execution and results so you can see the real IT projects and how they are managed and delivered. So without further ado, let's get started. But first, what is a tech project in IT? A tech project is any planned, structured initiative where you use technology to solve a problem. It has a goal or what you want to achieve, scope, what's included and what's not, timeline, start and end dates or milestones, resources are the people, hardware and software, and deliverables, or what you produce at the end. Tech projects can be small like installing software or large like Windows 11 migration. Typically, there's also a project manager that is assigned for the tech projects. An IT project manager is responsible for planning, coordinating, and leading technology-related projects from start to finish. So let's start with the first project, Remote Appliance Upgrade. The goal of this project is to upgrade the appliance from its outdated version to the latest stable release because the appliance is 5 versions behind and can't be patched on its current version. How did you approach upgrading something that outdated? So I coordinated with the vendor for the patching plan to make sure that everything will be updated properly this time. And I also had to do this face by face and step by step because we can't just jump from the 5 version behind to the latest version. And to also make sure that everything will be updated properly and gracefully. So for this project, before I start every upgrade, I make sure to back up the current settings and configurations first. Just in case something breaks after the upgrade, we can revert back to previous settings. And typically once the installation starts, it will just do its own thing and I'll just wait for it to finish and just make sure and monitor that there are no issues on its end. And when it's completed, I just make sure that the version is what's expected. How did you manage communication between different teams during the upgrades? I made sure communication is the priority from the beginning. I let all of the teams know what the impact will be, how long the downtime is, and what systems will be affected. Also, after the upgrade, I send an email on how it went, if it was successful, or if I encountered any issue, so everyone knew where things stood. What did you learn from this project? That's a great question, and I think it's never let your systems fall versions behind, especially five or more versions behind, because once you get that far behind, there's going to be a lot more issues with your systems being outdated. You can't patch the systems anymore. There's going to be compatibility issues. You're going to miss a lot of the newer features. So just make sure that you are up to date with the latest versions. Let's now move on to the next project, which is the Switch Upgrade Project, replacing Cisco 3850 with Cisco 9300. The goal for this project is to replace aging Cisco 3850 switches with Cisco 9300 switches to improve network performance, reliability, scalability, and support for modern PoE and security features. The scope for this project is planning, pre-configuration and testing, deployment and cutover, verification and troubleshooting, documentation of new network topology and configurations, and decommissioning and removal of legacy 3850s hardware. What part of the switch upgrade was the most challenging? I would say coordinating with the different teams that will be impacted by the upgrade is the most challenging because it's really hard to find a downtime that will work for everyone involved. The technical part actually is easier because once you have the template for the configuration, you can just load it on all the switches. And replacing is also easy because you just, you know, unplug and plug in the cables, but communicating with all the different teams, explaining what the impact is, getting everyone on board is time consuming. And sometimes you have to deal with 
free schedules and you know stuff like that and personally racking is also one of the most challenging parts of this project because sometimes the racks are full and it's hard to rack and hold the switch by myself so i can't do it on my own i need someone to hold it or screw it for me and that's hard because i have to ask someone for their free time and i have to schedule it with them instead of just me doing it on my own so i have to work with someone else how did you handle communication and coordination with multiple teams i sent emails to all of the teams that will be impacted by the switch over i sent emails before the schedule just to give them a heads up on when the schedule will be and then i also give them updates if there's any issue and when the switch over is complete what steps did you take to minimize network downtime? Planning was everything for this project. The biggest thing that helped me was knowing what is connected to every port so that it's easier to communicate to people what the impact will be once you, know, you move the port to the newer switch. Before the maintenance window, I also made sure to rack the switch. So on the actual window, all I had to do is to move the connections to the new switch test and verify if everything is working so that won't take up time during the window and i also have room and time for verifying and fixing if there's any issues for the next project it was the windows 11 migration project the goal for this project is to migrate all workstations from windows 10 to 11 using standardized imaging for security compliance and compatibility what made the Windows 11 migration project urgent? Windows 10 hit end of life in October of 2025, so we had to move users to the new Windows 11 ASAP. The scope for this project is preparing and validating Windows 11 images, installing required productivity and business applications, configuring devices for production readiness, coordinating upgrade schedules with end users, retiring, wiping, or recycling old hardware assets, and documenting results and system compatibility. What was your day-to-day -day like during this project? It's a lot of imaging machines, installing software, configuring systems, and scheduling sessions with users to swap their machines, and also wiping and retiring old assets and updating inventory. This is very repetitive, but this has to be done carefully. How did you ensure the user's data and settings were transferred correctly? That's a really great question because user data is most important when doing migrations like this. So for our case, we use folder redirection and OneDrive. For our desktop users, we use folder redirection and OneDrive for our laptop users to backup and sync their data. Folder redirection is a Windows feature that allows administrators to store certain user folders like documents, desktop, downloads, pictures on a network location instead of a local computer. So, instead of files being saved locally in the user account, they're actually stored on a file server. But to the user, it still looks like their normal documents folder. It's just redirected behind the scenes. Why is folder redirection useful? One reason is roaming and mobility. If users move between multiple computers like in an office, school, or lab, their files follow them. When they log into a different computer, their desktop and documents look exactly the same because those folders are coming from the network. Another reason is data backup and security. Since the folders are on the server, they can be regularly backed up by IT. If the user's local PC fails or is replaced, no data is lost. Everything is safely on the network. Folder redirection also works with offline file support, which means users can still access their files when disconnected, like working from a laptop on a plane. When they reconnect to the network, the files automatically sync back to the server. What is OneDrive? Microsoft OneDrive is a cloud storage service that lets you save your files online instead of only on your computer's hard drive. It automatically syncs your files between your laptop and the cloud or the Microsoft servers. 
Why is it useful? One reason is that you can access your files anywhere. You can log into your Microsoft account on any device, another computer, phone, or tablet, and instantly access your documents, photos, and files with no USB drive needed. Another reason is automatic backup and sync. If your laptop gets stolen, lost, or damaged, your files are still safe in OneDrive. Once you sign in on a new laptop, all your files can sync right back. What's the biggest lesson from a migration like this? I guess the biggest lesson is to not wait last minute because Windows already announced this years ago and we really could have started earlier. What was the biggest challenge with imaging new machines for Windows 11? I would say ensuring compatibility of the software that we use with Windows 11. Since we use a lot of software with their own configuration and settings, we had to make sure that everything is working with Windows 11 and once the user logs in, everything should work as expected. And this really took a lot of time for us to tweak and configure the settings on Windows 11 because there's features that they added and they changed with the newer OS that we had to deal with. So this is the toughest part and really took a long time for us to make sure that everything was working properly. And the last project is the new visitor system deployment project. The goal for this project is to deploy a new visitor management platform to streamline guest sign-in, improve security visibility, and modernize front desk operations. Why introduce a new visitor system? Because we were still doing paper sign-in, which is harder to track visitors and it's also not secure with the visitor logs and it also slows down the front desk. The scope of this project is testing and validating the new visitor system with corporate IT, installing hardware and software required for the new system, deploying a badge printer and integrating it with the application, training front desk and security personnel on system usage, and documenting processes and support procedures. What challenge surprised you the most? It's the printer for sure. I'm not a biggest fan of printers and this particular Zebra printer is very finicky. It has a lot of issues and sometimes it just stops working. It gets stuck in printer queues. It has random issues. So this is the most challenging part of this project. How did you train the security staff on the new system? Most of the staff were not tech savvy, so I had to keep the training really simple and practical. I just focused on the exact steps that they needed, which were how to check in the visitor, print a badge, and handle really basic issues. And I also made a short cheat sheet with screenshots that I posted on top of the printer that will help them when they have issues and will help them with some of the most common questions they have. So that's a wrap for all of my projects for this 2025. If you want to share your projects as well, please comment it down below. And I hope to see you guys in the next videos. Thank you so much for watching.